One year, that's all it took for China to shock the entire world by pulling off something most people thought was impossible. They challenged nature and forced it to change. This is the real story of how China removed billions of tons of sand from the desert and turned a dead land into a functioning ground. But before we dive into the hows and whys, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any updates. History of the Desert In the early years, many planted trees simply died. The soil was too weak and the wind was too strong. Water vanished super fast, but there was no stopping China. Chinese engineers and scientists studied every failure. They tracked which plants survived and which didn't. They measured the depth of the roots. They even tested different straw layouts, different grid sizes, and planting depths. Slowly, patterns started emerging, and some species failed completely. Others surprised everyone by holding on even in extreme heat. Smart planting. That's when China started shifting towards smart planting. This time, they came up with the genius plan of not forcing forests everywhere. They focused on zones, the areas closer to groundwater where there's water. Drier zones have shrubs and grasses. Some areas were left alone on purpose. This zoning approach reduced water waste and improved survival rates. The numbers showed that it worked. In regions where early projects saw survival rates below 20%, newer methods pushed that number past 70%. And that's a massive jump, guys. Think about it. This is a place where nature fights you at every step. But China doesn't stop. So China didn't scoop the sand out just like ice cream. There were many technical procedures involved. These guys had to lock the entire sand into one place. This stopped the dunes from moving. Then, eventually, sandstorms became weaker. And once the wind lost power, there wasn't any sand spreading into cities, roads, and farmland. The next move by China was total genius, as they mixed organic matter from plants with sand, and the straw slowly turned into usable soil. You can say China didn't move its soil, but changed it entirely. Now for the real part, guys. We all all admit that China's amazing with its tech, right? But this project's more personal, and here's why. You see, thousands of people lived in temporary camps inside the desert. Their days started before sunrise, so they could soak in the temporary cold air. They faced water shortages, medical care, and some even suffered exhaustion. So, for many workers, this was more than just a job, a pure mission. Many came from nearby regions affected by desertification. They were the people who saw their farms being swallowed by the deadly sand right in front of them. So, this had to be done. How you stop a desert without concrete. But even after constant planting of trees, work didn't stop there. China used satellites, drones, and wind data to track how sand dunes moved and where the wind hit the hardest. Then they came up with an innovative idea. Straw checkerboards. Workers laid down straw in massive grid patterns in the desert. Each square was about 20 by 20 feet. When you look at it from the sky, it looks like a giant golden chessboard expanding to the skyline. This wasn't done so you could appreciate it for the aesthetics. They stop sand from shifting and create small pockets where moisture can stick instead of evaporating instantly. But it wasn't an easy thing to do. Getting the straw there seemed almost like a nightmare. Millions of pounds had to be transported hundreds of miles into soft sand. Once they were on the site, workers dug trenches, and they carefully placed each straw with their hands. Despite the tough conditions, including heat, sand, and wind, they kept going, planting life inside the desert. When they put checkerboards, machines did their thing. They drilled small holes in the center of each square. These holes were created for plants that could tolerate extreme dryness. There were many trees like saxol, desert poplar, red willow, and tough shrubs. The seedlings weren't thrown just anywhere. They were actually grown carefully in nurseries. You could say the Chinese people made sure the plants could survive tough conditions and then planted them in the sand. Chinese workers also added a specific amount of water and packed the soil tightly around the roots. The straw protected young plants from the sun and kept the sand from burying them. That's when we witnessed the game-changing moment. The straw broke down naturally, and wind, dew, and microbes turned it into organic matter. That organic matter provided nourishment to the soil, and with that, roots started to grow deeper. Boom! Plants spread. But there were not enough trees. They still needed water. So, China decided to be super smart and turned to the thing that the desert had plenty of, sunlight. The Taklamakan gets over 27,000 hours of sunlight each year. China didn't let it burn their land, but used it for the best cause. What's even crazier is that along the Tarim Desert Highway, Chinese engineers installed 86 solar-powered pumping stations to pull groundwater from more than 100 meters below the ground. Then they sent it through underground pipes using drip irrigation. 
This system also kept over 200,000 trees alive despite the tough desert-like conditions. The highway itself became the world's first carbon-free desert expressway. China did smart work. Sunlight creates electricity, that electricity pumps water, and water, it grows trees. To make it even smarter, they use solar panels that are raised about 2 meters above the ground. This helped plants to grow underneath in shaded, cooler soil. Coisture also stayed longer, leading to green zones. So, solar power didn't just run machines, it powered lives. Now, before we get into how it powered lives, I'm doing a $100 Amazon gift card giveaway to celebrate when this channel reaches 1,000 subscribers. No action is required to enter. I'll randomly pick a winner once we hit the milestone. If you want to follow the journey or see the winner announcement, feel free to subscribe. Solar mirrors and stored sunlight. In some areas of China, there's a huge field of mirrors, known as heliostats, built. These mirrors aren't there for you to check yourself out, they're built for a genius purpose, to track the sun and reflect light onto the central tower. At the top of the tower, you can witness molten salt, which is heated to over 540 degrees Celsius. Through this heat, steam is produced, which rotates turbines and creates electricity. Thanks to this process, extra heat gets stored, which lets electricity flow even at nighttime. Such an efficient system obviously can't be cheap. A single 50 megawatt solar tower can easily cost about 100 130 million dollars, but it also proves something important that deserts can be energy factories, not just wasted land, turning the desert into an entire destination. This development had been on TV screens for a long time, and once it was set, people in China wanted to visit it. That's when China began developing ecotourism along the edges of the Taklamakan and Gobi deserts. There were artificial forests, solar farms, and water systems. These were the main sites for tourists to see and enjoy. During during this period, many local communities also got involved. Eco lodges popped up. Uyghur and Mongolian cultures were also part of the experience. Tourists could also experience camel riding across the dunes and stop at desert rest points. This tour wasn't free though. It cost anywhere from $40 to $120. Conservation, education, and income, all of it got blended into one single system. So, this desert became more of an opportunity than a problem a highway through the sea of death. While China has been working really hard on its infrastructure, it just doesn't know when to stop. And to support all their activities, China had to build roads through one of the hardest landscapes on Earth the Tarim Desert Highway. It runs over 300 kilometers straight all the way through the desert. It also connects oasis cities like Luntai and Minfeng. Construction began in 1993 and took just two years. Temperatures hit 50 degrees Celsius. Sandstorms also buried equipment with dunes constantly shifting. Under the asphalt of this desert highway, there's a hidden shield. It's layered with gravel, straw mats, and special fabrics that work together to keep holding the sand down. If you remove them, the road would be buried in a few weeks. But with these proper layers, it stands firm in one of the harshest places on Earth. The highway costs around $260 million to build. Today, it connects solar farms, research stations along tourist routes across a land that was once seen as impossible to develop. The empty desert is now functioning as a proper place, and turning into something useful surely seems strange in the best way possible. So, after decades of work, the results even shocked the experts. China has now restored over over 30 million hectares of barren land. Its forests rose from 10% to over 25% today, which is a huge change if you think about it. In many places, like Aksu and Kakea, forests stretch as far as your eyes can see. Poplar, hawthorn, almond, and walnut trees grow where only sand existed once. These trees help lock the soil in place and stop the dunes from spreading. The impact is real and measurable. Sandstorms have dropped by 82% compared to the 1980s. Dust-filled days fell from around 100 days a year to just 30. So, yeah, life definitely became way easier than before for nearby towns. The land can now absorb over 20,000 tons of carbon dioxide every year. The desert, once called the Sea of Death, began to support life again. In this way, it learned how to breathe. Well, honestly, not many agree that this is a complete success. Some scientists have warned that planting too many of the same kinds of trees can cause new problems. Many fast-growing trees, including poplar and willow, need large amounts of water. They also don't live very long. In the past, diseases wiped out billions of poplar trees, which destroyed years of progress almost overnight. That showed how fragile these 
systems can be. Meanwhile, some studies also point out that desertification still expands in some regions, despite forest numbers going up. Now, you've seen the full picture. It's time for you to tell us your thoughts about this in the comments down below, and feel free to subscribe to our channel before you leave.